Okay, we are inside the tomb of Nefertari in the Valley of the Queens in Egypt, of course, and this is one of the most beautifully preserved of all of the tombs of ancient times. I'm simply going to film in here. I'm not going to comment much because I know nothing about hieroglyphics or the symbolism of ancient dynastic Egypt. Just an opportunity for you to see one of the most beautifully preserved dynastic tombs. So here's an area that obviously was incomplete and still is incomplete. But just feast your eyes on the beautifully, naturally preserved hieroglyphics and symbolism of this tomb of the once great Nefertari. I believe this is symbolic of Osiris. And this could be the great king, the husband of Nefertari. And depictions of sacred cattle and others of the ancient gods. Go around me if you want. So we're in here with our group in October 2021. Our tour is about one half over now. And again, one of the best preserved tombs in all of ancient Egypt. is a sarcophagus. Thank you very much. Now we're coming out.
Thank you very much. Here are the keepers. <laughs> Only 10 minutes aside the tomb, which I honor. And this is Bedoui, who works with us on all of our tours. He is in charge of Central and Southern Egypt on all of our tours. His company is called Select Egypt. You can find it on the internet. And he works with us through Patricia Owian's um, company, which is called Horus Rising. So if you ever come to Egypt, the best company by far to work with is Select Egypt and this great gentleman, Bedoui. So you saw Nefertari's tomb, which is over there. And now we have the opportunity to visit three more. You can see that the Valley of the Queens is an absolutely desolate environment. Possibly one of the driest places on earth. And as we walk along, you're looking at the openings of other tombs in the area. Some are incredibly deep. I've looked in or down into a few of them and you can't see the bottom. And also there are tunnels going horizontally. I've also heard on a previous trip that the Valley of the Queens and the Valley of the Kings are actually connected by a series of tunnels that was evidenced uh, by us probably five years ago when we came here and were given special uh, ability to be able to go under ground in an area that was off limits but we were for some reason allowed to go because we found the person who held the keys So what I'm trying to do from now on is do long form videos rather than like 30 second clips and putting them together because I'm sure you are enjoying being able to see the whole area and not simply focusing on just the tombs themselves but the entire environment. Okay, now we're at the tomb of Titi. If you want to know details about who Titi is. Okay. Silence. Okay? Okay. So I'm allowed to speak, but I don't know what I'm supposed to say because I know very little about, as I said, the dynastic time period. And then you have the kings. But definitely not the, the level of preservation as we saw in Nefertari's tomb. That's oh, okay, thank you. Oh. Whoop. Guys, he wants, he wants to show you something. We can see there is a. It's okay. So we can see that there is a platform put on here, so that tells us there are probably level upon level of of tomb also underneath here.
Great, thank you. Finished. <laughs> So hopefully you've seen some of my other videos, especially of the Valley of the Kings, where the tombs go in several hundred feet into the bedrock. So these ones we've seen uh, clearly could have been done during dynastic times, but the one in the valleys, ones in the Valley of the Kings are so vast and long that uh, they were probably discovered by the dynastic people and utilized as tombs, but not made by the, in the dynastic time period. So, we are at the tomb of Prince Amen Kopchev, whom I've never heard of, but again, you can look that up on the internet if you want more detail about who these ancient nobility were. Oops. Okay. So this one's quite big. Going to go up the stair, I put in love with Vinci one. Get it the fetus. My gosh, my name is. These are very small compared to the ones in the Valley of the Kings, but still impressive since they are cut into the bedrock. And there is a sarcophagus in this one. So you can see that it is unfinished. And the box is relatively rough in terms of construction. It is made out of granite, but is not finely finished. It's very human sized. So this would be the type of work that the dynastic people were capable of with bronze chisels, being able to pound out the surface with hard stone hammers. And of course, the big difference between this and, for example, the boxes that we saw in the Serapium, which are much, much bigger, much more finely finished, so that's a big differentiation. Here you see dynastic work in hardstone versus pre-dynastic work in hardstone. There's the winged sun disc, and then the various deities of dynastic times. So 
So a lot of work to build something like this or hew this out of the living stone. But again, nothing on the scale of what we see in the Valley of the Kings, which could in dynastic times and were clearly an inheritance from an older age, possibly the same time as the great megalithic builders. Perfect. Thank you.